Welcome to episode 503 of Salcedo Paranormal. And tonight I am talking about paranormal patterns going from A to Z. And I'll tell you more about what that's uh, going to be about uh, when I get at, through the intro. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O, paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening. Whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and that is right before uh, Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, uh, also known as Rohan, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing my shows and putting putting them up on the station, along with the music that you hear, uh, which uh, they um, depending on which tracks are used, that's from both uh, Michael Strange and Rohan. So um, th- definitely always want to thank them for that. And um, if you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others, uh, and uh, and or rate and review it with uh, on your favorite podcast platform of choice. I got that all tangled in my head there for some reason. Anyway, um, you can also uh, find paranormal nonfiction and fiction books I've written over on Amazon. And I have a Patreon page, and uh, you can find extra content. Right now it's just one episode, but I'm hoping to change that in November, um, middle of the month or so. And there you can sign up for any of the membership tiers there, and uh, you'll get that extra content. Content, no matter what tier you sign up for, and that's just another way to help the show. Um, also, if you'd like to uh, make one-time donations to the show, uh, right now the best way, uh, the only real way to do that is through PayPal. Uh, I had having some issues with another the other services that I service that I use, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get that fixed within the next month or so. Um, but uh, and help is never expected, but always appreciated as there are are always expenses in making these shows from equipment to research materials to travel expenses. Uh, A week from, as I'm recording this today on Saturday, a week from today, I will be at the Mid-Michigan Paracon. That is uh, Saturday and Sunday, November 4th and 5th, uh, right after Halloween, basically. And I'll be walking around and uh, just checking it out for the first time. I've never been to a Paracon before. And making audio recordings of myself and anyone else that wants to join me to talk about all things paranormal. And then I'll share those recordings once I get back home. So looking forward to that. I uh, can't believe it's already a week away. And um, just want to thank everyone who has also supported the show, uh, especially recently. Um, and uh, again, if you would like to do that, if you'd like to go there, I would love to meet anyone that wants to go there. Uh, just check out their website, which I always have in the episode description. Uh, but if you'd just like to support the show and uh, make it so that it's easier for me to go to these kinds of events, uh, the PayPal is the best way to uh, go- do that. So um, I think that takes care of all of that. I do have an announcement about uh, my schedule uh, going forward. Not this week. This week we'll, um, I'm planning on doing the, these, the same schedule as before, uh, basically Saturday through Wednesday. And uh, including Halloween, and but um, once I get back, I'm going to be changing the schedule of uh, streams. Not so much the release schedule of shows. I still plan on rec- uh, releasing one of those every day, uh, at least five days a week, sometimes six days a week, whenever possible. Um, but I'm finding that um, uh, because of my vision changing over time, I'm going to have to change how I do things, how I do the research for the shows. And um, I just can't do all the research and then also do the show in the same way as I could before. I think that's what led to um, basically 
the canceled shows that I had let from this earlier this week, basically. So um, looking forward to getting a new schedule going. I will, of course, make sure everyone knows about that once I get that started. It, it won't be, um, again, it won't be five days a week, unfortunately. But if you just listen to the shows on um, the podcast or YouTube feeds, then there won't be that much of a difference. It's just for those that uh, make it to the live streams that will that will change. That schedule will change. So um, thank you all for all your support and understanding as I uh, go th- go forward with the show as as well as I can because I do love uh, the show and doing these shows and talking about all these subjects. So. Uh, as part of that, um, I wanted to, to do something special for this week with Halloween uh, being in the middle of it, and uh, but also something that I could do fairly easily. And I had found this website, and I'll include it in the episode description. Uh, it's basically called Paranormal Encyclopedia. And it has, it's basically just what it says in a way. It has uh, an alphabetical listing of all these different terms and words and some names of places, uh, of all things paranormal. And that apparently has to do with uh, just uh, just about everything as far as I've, I've seen so far. And I thought it would be good to take this week to sort of review some of the basic ideas and concepts of the paranormal using this uh, website as sort of a, a, a starting point. Uh, it is going to be just quick descriptions based on what they have in the site and then my own thoughts based on those, um, those summaries. And uh, in no way am I, I really want to do this to help highlight this, the site in a way, because I think there's a lot of information there. We're not going to get through anywhere near all of what's in there. Uh, and if you click on each entry, it goes, I believe it goes to its own page in a lot of cases. And so there's so much information there. And I mean, I think with all this, you have to consider that that um, there's always differing opinions on things and different sources of information that people use to get to make their own sort of make these kinds of sites and articles and, and uh, descriptions. So not saying that this is, um, you know, the the best or the worst, for that matter, as I say, I'm not trying to put this down at all. I, I think it's amazing that it exists. I'm not saying it's the best or worst source. I think it's just another source that is a good starting point for this, these kinds of um, conversations. So uh, I'm going to, this week, just go through this, this uh, web page and, these, and basically all, the, all these web pages for all the different letters of the alphabet and go over several of the entries and just talk about my thoughts on um, the basic description there. So hope you all enjoy this. Um, I just wanted to do something special for my favorite time of year here that wasn't the usual shows. As I sort of transition into the new schedule and everything, I, I wanted to still want to do shows this week. But, uh, but yeah, so that's basically the plan for today and the t- tonight and the next several shows here. At least um, four or five. I might. I'm gonna try to do an extra show on Halloween. Do a, two episodes that night, if at all possible. So um, now that I've rambled on about that for long enough, uh, let me get to this uh, page here. And again, I will include the website in the episode description, so you can all check it out as we go and and look into more of it yourself and uh, go from there. So, of course. This website has a different page for each letter of the alphabet, so I'm starting with, uh, of course, A, and this is English, so this is that's where this starts here. And um, I looked through a little bit of this earlier just to get figure out where I'm gonna, going to start. And um, the first thing that I wanted to to mention here uh, was the word alien. Now. Um, this description says an extraterrestrial being, i.e. from some location other than the Earth. And that is, I think, one uh, valid description and, and, and definition. But I've always looked at the word, the, the, the term alien, or the word alien, just as meaning more of something that is unknown. And so to me, there's a lot 
in the paranormal. I mean, you could, I, I, I sort of, to me, I could use the words alien and cryptozoological, basically cryptid, um, and mean the same thing to me personally. That's not, um, that's not saying that everyone should. I just think that alien can, can encompass a lot of things. Any kind of entities that appear to people almost ghost-like, but they don't appear to be human, or at least not completely human, I think they could also qualify, um, in my own mind, as alien. So um, that's the first one here. And we're just, like I said, I'm going to try to be as uh, quick with these summaries as I can, just so that we can get through, hopefully, we can get through this um, this uh, this whole thing here, just uh, selected entries from it. Um, within this five days of this week here. So um, the next one I wanted to talk about here, uh, there's two of them that are related, is the first one is Apport. That's A-P-P-O-R-T. And this uh, says, an object or living being that materializes from thin air in the presence of a medium, often claimed to be a gift from the spirits. Uh, and that's what that description says. But I've also heard it just used to describe any anything that appears out of nowhere. Um, not so much in the UFO uh, context, but I almost wonder if you could also take that and put that sort of in that category, depending on how, how much you want to scale that up. Um, but the other term that is associated with that is let me find it here. Uh, here it is. As port. I'm not sure how you say that exactly, but it's A S P O R T. And this is basically the opposite. It says an object or living being that vanishes from a location can be considered the opposite of an airport. And the reason I want to bring these two things up is so many stories involve this kind of process, this vanishing or appearing of things. Usually it's more um, objects. Usually it's not people. But also, in rare cases, I have heard of um, this happening with people. It's not super common from what I've heard and read over the years. But um, it has, I've, I've heard of and read a few stories over the years. I've been sort of looking into all these things. But most often it's sort of associated with objects. I think my favorite example of that from one of my shows a little while quite a while ago now is um this this in this house this um the writer of this account <coughs> excuse me had a um a spot in their the family's house where in the kitchen where it always just felt weird. And one day the writer's um the writer's father, the, the dad happened to drop their phone right in the spot. And they all heard it. He, they and the writer, I believe. But basically, people heard it fall and land on the floor. But when they looked down at the floor, it wasn't there. And then years and years later, um, one day, the writer and, and some other, I think their brother, were in the kitchen, and they heard that sound of the phone hitting the floor. And it was that phone. Now, that might be something slightly different. I don't know if that's the same thing. But it is an object sort of vanishing and reappearing. Uh, and it was the same phone that had fallen and vanished years earlier. So to me, that's an amazing story. And I just, I really wish, I really wonder about that phone. What it, I, I always come back to that one. I wonder what was on that phone, if it was completely, the power was completely drained, if it had any power, if um, what the clock would have said on it. Uh, anyway, so I'm already, see, I'm already, this is why this series could go on for a while. I have no idea. Um, this series could, I'm trying to make it go five shows, but five or six shows, but um, so that's, uh, this makes me, I think these, some of these entries are going to make me think of stories and that's where it's going to, could potentially get derailed here. Um, also, I'm not too worried if we have to go over and just um, finish off the series at a later date, then that's fine too. So just so everyone knows how that's going to go. 
Um, getting back to the list here of uh, of things, it talks about here it has um, astral and then astral body and astral plane and astral astral projection. So it's, for astral, it says a vague form, usually um, usually that describes the fabric of the heavens. So this other world sort of, uh, I guess, other level of reality. Astral body, the spiritual version of the physical body existing in the astral plane. And then it has that for the next definition here. Astral plane, the dimension inhabited by higher spiritual beings, invisible to humans, but visited during sleep. And uh, it trans states and after death. And then, of course, I already mentioned that just the, above their astral projection or astral travel basically out-of-body experiences. Now, I've heard the two different things, or I've heard those terms used, uh, people make distinctions between those, so I don't know for sure, but um, that was sort of the next batch of words I wanted to cover. And um, I've had out-of-body experiences, so I do think that exists, and um, yeah, so, and so many people have had them, and, and uh so, yeah, let me see here. I think that covers the rest of the A's. Again, there's so many things in here. Um, I guess uh, was, that, was, that was what I wanted to do. There was one more that I wanted to cover, and that was, of course, Aura, A-U-R-A. And this is an apparent envelope of energy that surrounds human individuals. I wonder if it does surround other beings as well, but anyway. Invisible under normal circumstances, but... Uh, Claim to be seen by psychics and aura photographers. Oral, yeah, aura photographers. Uh, curly and photography. So that was the last one I wanted to um, to get through in the A's. So it looks like we're only going to get through a couple letters at a time. Two, three letters at a time. So yeah, this may be an ongoing series even after this week. But that's okay. Um, that's uh, just more more opportunities for shows. So um so we can start on the B's, letter B, today. And then um, if we don't finish, then that's where the next one, next show will pick up. So, And um, I didn't have a ton I wanted to do for the for the B's, actually, if I remember right. Um, it talks about places like the Bennington Triangle, Bermuda Triangle, three different triangle areas, and those are just seem to be window areas and or just odd areas where high strangeness seems to happen. But anyway... Um, the one thing I wanted to mention here is, of course, Bigfoot. It says, one of, one of many names given to a legendary ape-like creature said to live in the wilderness of North America. Bigfoot is generally regarded as the USA version of Sasquatch, as in Canada, and Yeti, and that's they say that's in Nepal. Um, but, I mean, I've heard of so many other names as well. So many other locations. It seems like that kind of a um, cryptid is just different versions of it. Are can be found all around the world as well, not other countries, like they said, but not just there. So, um, so yeah. Moving on here. Um, let's scroll down. So yeah, Bridgewater Triangle. They mentioned that. Actually, that takes care of the bees. That was faster than I expected it to be. So we can move on to the seas here. And uh, probably end the show with that. But uh, again, I have no idea. This is sort of I have this is a, I have this planned, but also I don't know how long it's going to take. So it's uh, sort of a uh, half planned, I guess you could say. Uh, onto the seas mentions, of course, Edgar Casey, uh, American psychic and healer. Um, going to now. Um, one of the things I want to mention here is. Something that has been popping up over the last several years a lot more, even um, just among people in general, and that is, of course, chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A. And the definition here says a yogic term, meaning a series of circular life force ver vortices, vortices in a person, uh, at which point energy is received, transformed, and uh, distributed. So, again, that's just the, the description. Seems like I've heard similar things before, so things before. So, um, there's another one here. This is something I've heard of more in, um, I would say, 
um, famous cases of this, and not so much like in everyday things, but uh, channeling. This is uh, the process of communicating with non-physical beings, uh, and it says spirits and and uh, and etc. I would also include just because of th stories I've heard over the years. Um, I don't even know if it has to necessarily be spirits in some cases. And I'll just leave that there. Um, I kind of have an idea of a show I'd like to do at some point on a certain case where that might not might not have been just spirits. Um, okay. Now there are a few a uh, few words here I've seen before and heard before that I wanted to um, to cover, and they seem to be different kinds of sensing of the paranormal or of spirits. Um, and the first one here is clear audience, similar to clairvoyance, but specifically related to sounds. The ability to hear paranormal voices and uh, sounds. And um, it says clear sentience. That is the next one there. A uh, general term to describe clear sensing or paranormal sensing ability. An umbrella term which includes uh, clairvoyance, clear audience, and other similar terms. And then clairvoyance here, it says uh, French for clear seeing, which is interesting. The ability to sense paranormal people, objects, and or other entities, I guess they mean there. Um, so that's a neat set of terms I've heard before um, associated with a lot of people that seem to have those abilities. So, And um, medium psychics, I believe, I believe I've heard that those associated with those people as well. I don't know for sure, but, um, but yeah. So um, let me see. I'm just going to scroll down here. Uh, now, this is, um, let me see here. So I wanted to skip that. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's one that is important. There are a couple here that are important, I think. And I think one with these, this one, next one is cryptid. Any species of animal which has not been form formally identified or cat categorized by science. Um, so, and then, of course, the next one, and the one that ends the seas is cryptozoology the study and search for those animals whose present day existence is not formally recognized by mainstream science. So that's where the C's end. Let me look at the D's because I feel like there wasn't a ton there I wanted to cover either. So maybe we could sort of um, get through these, this next letter as well pretty fast. Um, deja vu he has in here for the D's and unexpected sense of, <clears throat> Excuse me, an unexpected sense of familiarity when encountering what you believe is actually a new experience, place, person, or object. So, um, let me see here. It has the word double, the name of a, oh, uh, wait, that's not it. Uh, double, uh, it was up too far above it. An exact duplicate of a person, usually an apparition, uh, located a distance away from the original. That's an odd one, so it's almost like a doppelganger, uh, which it also has in here. And that's uh, in German folklore, a wraith or apparition of a living person, a spirit double or exact replica of a person. So uh, and I think that actually does take care of the Ds. So I think we t um, fit as much in there as we possibly could today. So, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys this series. Um, I'm going to keep on doing this, like I said, throughout the rest of this um this next few days here through Wednesday, maybe Thursday, depending on how I'm feeling and how much more we have left to go by at that point. And uh, so we'll see. But um, thank you all for listening. And thank you for being patient as I sort of get back to doing shows again. And I will talk to you all on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.